When dealing with nerve damage and pain, your body needs all the help it can get. So today, I'm going to talk about how we can revive your nerves with an amazing little molecule known as nitric oxide. Now, the impact of nitric oxide on our health and wellness is so significant that three independent scientists that discovered nitric oxide shared a Nobel Prize in 1998. Now, the challenge we, we're, we have is that as we get older, we produce less and less nitric oxide. But don't worry, because in today's video, I'll share with you how to leverage the incredible benefits of nitric oxide, despite your age, in order to help you recover from peripheral neuropathy in record-breaking time. It's gonna be good, stay with me. I'm Dr. Coppola. I'm a leading expert in peripheral neuropathy, co-author of the critically acclaimed book, Defeat Neuropathy Now in Spite of Your Doctor, and I'm also the co-founder of Neforia CM. If you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. Also, don't forget to click on the bell so that you get notified when I publish new content. Today, I'm talking about nitric oxide, also referred to as NO and its effect on peripheral nerves. In this video, we'll cover what nitric oxide is, the benefits of nitric oxide, what happens to nitric oxide production as we age, and how we can actually increase nitric oxide levels. Nitric oxide is a colorless gas composed of two molecules, oxygen and nitrogen. It's naturally produced in our body primarily in, by the endothelial cells, which are the cells that make up the inner layer of our blood vessels. It's important for many aspects of our health, but the most important one is vasodilation. That means it can actually relax the inner muscles of the blood vessels, causing them to widen. The effects of the, that is that it will actually decrease blood pressure while increasing blood flow to vital organs and tissue, such as your nerves. What makes nit nitric oxide so important is that it has many important functions within the human body. It's been shown to actually decrease inflammation, reduce pain, decrease blood pressure, actually decrease platelet adhesion or you know, blood clots. It can actually kill bacteria and parasites, and it can actually help with erectile dysfunction. It can improve heart function, and it can even help with depression and mood disorders. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Make sure you stick with me till the end of the video as I reveal the top four methods for increasing nitric oxide so you can get all the amazing benefits of this wonderful molecule. First, let's talk about circulation for a moment. People automatically assume that if they don't have varicose veins, cold hands or feet, then their circulation must be just fine but nothing could be further from the truth. Your circulation may be impaired without obvious signs. For instance, one subtle sign of decreased circulation is tingling or numbness in your hands and feet. Well, guess what? This is a symptom of peripheral neuropathy as well. That's because if you have peripheral neuropathy, you automatically have poor circulation. So why is it even important? Well, your blood carries oxygen and nutrients to your nerve cells. When your circulation is impaired, then these vital nutrients won't make it to the nerves, resulting in more nerve damage. Now, it goes even one step further than this. When trying to heal your damaged peripheral nerves, normal blood flow simply isn't good enough. We need enhanced blood flow for sufficient delivery of oxygen and critical nutrients in order to accelerate nerve repair. Remember, nitric oxide has the ability to relax the inner muscles of the blood vessels causing the vessels to widen. This results in increased blood flow to the nerves, and guess what? Better oxygenation and nutrient delivery to the peripheral nerves. This is why it's incredibly important to keep your NO levels as high as you possibly can. However, there's a significant challenge to this, because as we age, we produce less and less nitric oxide. Have you ever been told that your health problems are just because you're getting older? Well. 
I hate to say it, but there's some truth to that. For instance, by the time men hit age 40, they have 50% reduction in nitric oxide levels. But it doesn't stop there. By age 50, a man's production of NO drops even lower with a 70% reduction, while a 50-year-old woman will produce 65% less NO. Now, just when you think it couldn't get any worse, it does. By age 60, a woman's production of NO drops by 80%, and a man's decreases by 90%. Can you believe that? 90%. That's amazing and horrible all at the same time. So here's the reality. The lower NO levels, the more we're prone to developing diseases. Diseases like peripheral neuropathy, heart disease, atherosclerosis, hypertension, Alzheimer's or dementia, erectile dysfunction, or even blood clots. So it's important for us to address how can we increase our nitric oxide levels. There's four ways that we can increase our nitric oxide levels. Eating vegetables high in nitrate, exercise, increase in daily antioxidants, or taking an NO booster. So let's start with number one, eating nitrate-rich vegetables. Nitrates are a precursor to NO. This means nitrates will get converted to nitric oxide in the body. So the more nitrates you eat, the more NO you'll produce. How exactly does this happen? I'm gonna give you the simplified explanation so I don't bore you with all the scientific details. Your salivary glands and oral bacterial play an essential role in the conversion of nitrate to nitric oxide. The class of bacteria that resides on the back of our tongue will begin the necessary conversion and the salivary glands will help in the uptake into the bloodstream. But in order for this process to work, it's imperative that you don't use a mouthwash with an alcohol base or with preservatives. Research shows that mouthwash destroys the good bacteria on the tongue necessary for the conversion of nitrate to nitric oxide for up to 12 hours. Clinical studies have even shown that the detrimental effects of mouthwash on nitric oxide production may even contribute to the development of diabetes and high blood pressure. Better yet, don't even use a commercial mouthwash. It's easy and cheap to make your own from essential oils. Just Google a do-it-yourself natural mouthwash with essential oils and you'll find tons of recipes. Now, let's look at the foods that are high in nitrates that you, you need to include in your diet. The top 10 foods highest in nitrates, starting from lowest to highest, include beets, Swiss chard, oak leaf lettuce, beet greens, basil, spring greens, butterleaf lettuce, cilantro, rhubarb, and arugula. Dr. M and I make it a point to eat tons of arugula, cilantro, spring greens, basil, beets on a daily basis. Here's an interesting fact. When you juice beets, the nitrate level is actually much higher than eating just the beet itself. I've got to tell you, we love beet juice. So what's cool is that you get the good levels of nitric oxide from the juice and it's also really good for your liver. Okay, moving on. Exercise. So how exactly does exercise cause an increase in NO? Exercise really does get the blood pumping, largely because it improves endothelial function by a process known as hemodynamic shear stress. Well, what the heck does that mean? Well, in plain English, it's the friction of the blood flowing through the blood vessels that stimulates the inner lining or the endothelial cells to release NO. This is a process that increases with exercise. In other words, we need to get the body moving and get the blood flowing, and it doesn't necessarily have to be high impact exercises. Here are some of the benefits you'll get from even low impact exercise. It can improve nitric oxide levels. It can improve cardiovascular health. It, of course, it can strengthen our muscles, which is important for peripheral neuropathy sufferers. It can improve balance, also important for people with neuropathy. It can decrease blood pressure, improve our mood and well-being, and also re reduce the risk of dementia. It can also increase insulin sensitivity. Now, I recommend exercise in 30 minutes, at least four times a, a, a week. And if you have physical limitations that prevent you from working out 30 minutes uh, at, at a time, I recommend 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the afternoon. 
For optimal results, it's best to combine aerobic training such as walking, biking, or swimming with anaerobic training such as resistance training. I think it's important to do something you really enjoy. If you don't like traditional exercise, maybe you might like something like dancing or Tai Chi. For those of you with moderate to severe peripheral neuropathy where these activities might seem impossible to you right now, make sure you watch our video on exercise for peripheral neuropathy. This video includes an exercise program that we put together for our neuropathy patients. And even people with the most severe case of peripheral neuropathy can do these. Just click on the letter I at the top of your YouTube screen and it will take you to that video. Now, there's one other form of exercise that's passive and requires very little exertion on your part. This is helpful if you're limited on your ability to walk or move. It's called whole body vibration. By simply standing on a vibrating platform for 5 to 10 minutes per day, you can increase nitric oxide levels. If you decide to get one, it's best to use one that has handles that you can hang on to for safety reasons. I'll include a link in the description box to some of the, the units we recommend. Now, moving on to number three, increasing daily antioxidants. Nitric oxide is an unstable molecule that degrades very quickly in our bl bloodstream due to free radicals. One of the ways that we can increase its stability and limit its breakdown is by consuming antioxidants. Antioxidants are molecules that neutralize free radicals. Besides protecting nitric oxide from breakdown prematurely, antioxidants also protect us from things like heart disease, cancer, and other diseases. Some important antioxidants are glutathione. In fact, glutathione is one of the most powerful antioxidants. And foods that contain glutathione include almonds, garlic, onions, asparagus, and avocados. Now, another important antioxidant is vitamin C, which can be found in citrus fruits, berries, kiwi, and even maca powder. Now, there's another important antioxidant, which is really important for our cardiovascular system, and that's vitamin E. And it can be found in nuts and seeds, spinach, butternut squash, and olive oil. Now, there's another group of powerful antioxidants known as polyphenols. Two of the most important are resveratrol and curcumin. And they can be found in raw nuts, organic grapes, and turmeric. Moving on to number four, nitric oxide boosters. There are basically three supplements used to increase nitric oxide levels, and they include arginine, L-citrulline, and nitrates. Now, clinical studies have revealed that oral supplementation with arginine is the least effective for increase in nitric oxide levels, and that's because it gets metabolized or broken down in the liver. Once it's metabolized, it's an ineffective NO booster. Now, nitrates are effective at increasing NO levels. However, I like to use L-citrulline because not only does, does it increase NO levels, but it has the added benefit of increasing growth hormone levels. Growth hormones have a whole slew of benefits from accelerating the healing process, growth and repair of tissue, including nerve tissue. It helps with fat loss. It can improve your sleep, give you a healthy skin glow, and the list goes on and on. Now, L-citrulline is commonly used for decrease in dementia, enhanced, uh, enhancing brain function, decrease in blood flow, improving cardiovascular health, it can decrease inflammation and pain, also reduce muscle fatigue and weakness. It's used for improving erectile dysfunction and also for increasing energy and athletic performance. So this is how you want to use L-citrulline. First of all, taking L-citrulline on an empty stomach will help promote better absorption. It can be taken 30 minutes before a workout if you're looking for better performance while you're working out. It can also be taken when you wake up or before you go to bed. Now, as far as dosage, I would recommend 1 to 2,000 milligrams daily for peripheral neuropathy sufferers. And I'll leave a link in the description below for a good source of L-citrulline. By the way, this L-citrulline formula also has acetyl-L-carnitine, -L which provides tremendous benefits for neuropathy recovery, which I'll cover in a future video. Well, now that you know the benefits of NO, be sure to boost your NO, NO levels daily. Take your recovery to the next level. As always, thank you for watching. 
If you've enjoyed this information and you want more like it, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. While you're there, like us if you've enjoyed this video, and don't forget to click on the bell to be notified when we publish new content. One last thing, your input is always important to us. What do you want to hear about next? Tell us so we can cover it in a future video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Today, I'm going to talk about how we can revive your nerves. Take two. Win. Thirty. That's good. That's good.